Billy. We're going to do that. We're going to split it, I think. Yeah. One egg hard and one egg medium. Ham? Yeah, I did. Yep. Ham? Ham, Ham is good. Yeah, that'd be fun. Thank you. Welcome to Hy-Vee Today with Tony Tone. We're live inside Muscatine Hy-Vee on 2nd Avenue in Muscatine, streaming on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Now, here's Tony Tone. Hello, friends. Happy Friday. Welcome to the Hy-Vee Today show. It is the 10th of July. It's so good to be with you. We had a little bit of a storm last night roll through. Um, I just wanted to remind you all that if you need things like a weather radio, we've got a couple different options here in the store. It's a great way to get those alerts. Uh, they just, you know, with the weather radio, you plug it in, you program it, and then it kind of just hangs out until it gets uh, a warning or a watch, and then it starts doing the robot voice. The National Weather Service for the Quad Cities has issued a thunderstorm warning. Last night, tornado warning. So there was almost a tornado near Adalissa and Wilton. Um, sirens went off in town. I looked at my weather alert. It said thunderstorm warning. And then my wife called and said, I think it's a tornado. And then you kind of go, well. So we went in the basement anyways, just to be safe. And I hope everything's OK in your neck of the woods. It seems like we needed the rain, which is good. My grass needs to be mowed. So today might be the day to do it since it's not as humid out. Uh, Lutheran Living Senior Campus weather report for today, Friday, partly sunny, breezy, a high of 87. Maybe less humid would be awesome. Tonight's low 67, as you can see. We'll take it. Saturday, chance for a thunderstorm in the afternoon, 87 the high, and, uh, you know, it's going to be okay. A little, uh, but it says it's going to be humid tonight and today, but it doesn't feel as humid right now, at least, if you've been outside at uh, you know any time between this morning and it's 8.34 right now. So I'm, I'm okay with that. A little less humidity. Uh, our very own Chris Anderson, who is here, was uh, somehow did some painting before the storm last night. I saw this. Uh, Chris Anderson, artist, is the Facebook page. He's been doing some work downtown, uh, and then he got this done just in the nick of time, apparently. So adding some nice touches, and this is on the wall. It's a second in Walnut, and it's Trinity. What is it again? A... A pa Episcopal Church. Episcopal Church. So that looks awesome. Look at the watermelon, the musk melon, right? That's so cool. Were the flowers done too last night as well? No, I was just touching them up a little more. Touching them up, he says. Butterfly as well. Look at that. Is there like a wave crashing in the background behind that butterfly? A little crescendo of a wave? Chris is impressed that I noticed things like that. That's awesome. So very good work by Chris Anderson. Again, 
the guy that's literally painting buildings, walls, super cool. And that was just a blank canvas waiting for something like that. So shout out to Chris Anderson, who again is with us this morning and is, listen, you want to commission him to paint something at your house, reach out, okay? Chris Anderson, artist on Facebook, he'd love to, to do something for you. In our parking lot, I'm going to mention the truckload sale because it's uh, still going on and it's going to start at 9 a.m. this morning. Great deals outside only, right? So you can see we're out there right now. Our guy Brad has a shot with some Barton vodka. There's some Powerade. There are some great meat deals out there. There are some snacks and that will be officially open at 9 a.m. Keep that in mind. Nothing is sold out. We've got everything that we need still for you. You can see some snacks over here, some chips, some Chex Mix, sweet carbs. I miss my carbs. I've lost 12 pounds since Monday. No sugar, no carbs, really. So, you know, let me just bask in those chips and Chex Mix for a minute. So there's great deals outside at the parking lot. We'll come back uh, in a couple minutes and check out some more of those. Maybe we can get Brad on the meat truck. The thing about the meat truck is it's refrigerated. And it's a little dark, so it's kind of hard to see. But we'll we'll see. Uh, There's some fantastic deals out there. And then this is inside the tent where you will enter uh, and get taken care of. And it looks like there's a customer right bright and early. And there's look at there. There's the meat truck. You open that door. I think that truck is set at 22 degrees. So that felt real good yesterday. I don't know if you were outside at all yesterday, but it was miserable. All right. I think I sweated off some of the weight that I. Oh, look at this. Brad is going inside the meat truck. Okay. It's kind of like playing a first-person video game. It's like a haunted house, Chad says. So there's our team, and the team's going to be like, oh, there's a guy with a camera. There's Hunter doing a good job. And uh, from cases of bacon to burgers and chicken and catfish and everything in between, they'll get you taken care of. All right, so we'll come back uh, in a couple minutes. If Brad's going to hang out there, that's fine. If not, he can come back, whatever he wants to do. Uh, The last thing that I'll mention really quick, because it's coming up tonight, Chef Scott is cooking Dinner prime rib. Doesn't that sound good? I have to bring one home because uh, my wife and I love prime rib. And when Chef Scott was at DeBeat's downtown, of course, he and Chef DeBeat did a great job. And now Chef Scott is here. So Chef Scott right there, Scott Long, doing some prime rib tonight. King cut, queen cut. How about some horseradish, white cheddar, mashed potatoes, and asparagus? So you're talking about a 14-ounce cut or a 10-ounce cut ready to go for tonight for dinner Chef Scott did his, uh, his twist on a French dip egg roll yesterday. Absolutely delicious. Had a sample. So good. So that guy is just doing a great job. And apparently he's going to drop by the show later with some macaroni and cheese that indeed has mustard in it, since Chris Anderson claims that mustard helps cut through the creaminess, gives it a little... Uh, I don't, listen, we'll find out. I don't, stay tuned to watch me eat macaroni and cheese, I guess. Just a little sample. All right, our friend Karen Cooney uh, is back on the show. Karen wears many hats, but the hat that she's wearing this morning is going to be representing the League of Women Voters for Muscatine County, and there is a candidate forum happening tomorrow. And Karen, it's great to see you. Thank you. It's good to be here. Thanks for being here. Um, I think the work of the uh, League of Women Voters do an excellent job. I wonder if we can start, before we jump into the forum tomorrow, for people that are watching that are thinking, I've heard of the League of Women Voters, but they're not sure, could you give us like an overview, and then let's jump into tomorrow's event. Right, so right, a little background right. on the League of Women Voters. League of Women Voters has been around for uh, quite a uh, long period of time. Of course, it's a national organization, and then breaks down from state into to your district area. And just a real quick side note is men can uh, join too. Oh. Uh, and, you know, as in family for that matter. Mm-hmm. But uh, the intent behind it is uh, we want to make sure that everybody is informed. Mm-hmm. We want to make sure that uh, a voter has that chance to be able to vote mm-hmm. uh, no matter which way they want to vote. Sure. It's more as in that they uh, have that chance in which to be able to do it. And this year, of course, is the 19th Amendment year with the women's suffrage and everything. Right. And so we've been a big part of that, uh, making sure that folks are reminded that, in, in a matter of speaking, it really wasn't that long ago before women had a lot of rights right. in which to do things. So that's kind of like an overview cap of what we 100 do. hundred years strong. I love that on the screen mm-hmm. up there for the League of Women Voters. And yes, of course, uh, 1920. 
yep. is what we're talking about. So yeah, to your point, Karen, it isn't really that long ago that it was official that women could vote. I mean, I think a lot of us would maybe take that for granted. Yeah, yeah. It didn't, it, it didn't affect us, but we can at least appreciate the history. And um, and that's why the League of Women Voters is going strong for 100 years. There's not a lot of organizations that have been around. You know, hy is a company celebrating 90 years next year, which is awesome. Well, then we beat you. You did by 10 years. But, there, <laughs> but there's not a lot of organizations that have made it a hundred years. It's a yeah. big deal. It is. It is. And we're very proud of it. And, mm -hmm. and um, I can tell you just from uh, listening to some of the things for the national convention and yeah. such, it's, it's totally amazing how many branches of things that we have a tendency to go out on and, and champion yep. um, on. And um, it's a lot of different diversity. And so at another time, we could probably get into a lot of that. Too. Yeah, I would love to give a little history lesson on exactly the ins and outs of the organization. So tomorrow, and the timing is perfect that you're here today, Friday, July 10th. Yes. Tomorrow, Saturday, July 11th, a candidate forum is scheduled. Um, maybe it was a couple of months ago, we didn't know if candidate forums could happen because certainly the pandemic has impacted a lot of things, yeah. right? And we yeah. want to make sure that people still can be educated before they go to the polls because we do, and whether you're voting by mail or going to your polling place in November, you still should be able to know wh exactly what you want to know about the candidates. So we are exactly. one day, look at this, one day, one hour, 47 minutes away. <laughs> uh, what was the process like, Karen? Was it a tough decision to proceed with the forums or was it something you thought we're going to do this even if it has to look different this year? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things we knew is that how, just again, how important that it is to make something happen. Mm -hmm. And um, we already have had uh, in this COVID-19 time is a, a space of time where uh, Zoom meetings and things like sure. that have been kind of prevalent. In fact, I have a couple more of those yet this morning. <laughs> Uh, to be exact, um, and that's a, with my other hat that has yeah. to do with education. But um, the point is, is that we didn't want it to necessarily look like a Zoom meeting either. Sure. You know, that was one of our things. We knew that we had a chance to be able to do something new and fresh mm -hmm. and just uh, uh, professional and just round it all up so that people are not only going to want to watch, but they're going to enjoy what they're watching with it. So I think we have we have the flyer for tomorrow's event, maybe. So for people that are watching us right now, Legal Women Voters Candidate Forum tomorrow, uh, they'll be able to watch it on MPW Cable Channel Five, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, it's going to be is it it's at the library, correct? Yes. Okay, so live from Musser Public Library, and you can see the schedule. So 10:30 a.m. candidates for county auditor, right? Yes. And then at 12 p.m., a county attorney looks like it was postponed yes. for now. But then at 1 p.m., the candidates for county sheriff. So yes. a great opportunity for folks to tune in and watch and learn. And I'm, are they going to be able to ask questions while it's happening? It's, I guess is it streaming on social media? Mm -hmm. where there would be that interactive angle. Yeah, there's going to be that ability to take a do. Well, we have uh, uh, we have one question for sure that is automatically by the league, and they get okay. that ahead of time. Perfect. The idea behind that is uh, to allow them to have a, a comfort zone, you okay. know, what they're doing with this. Because I want you to think about it. Mm -hmm. I know you like to talk. Sure. Okay. Just a little now, bit. Now, if you had to do a forum. Yeah. Do you think you could get your point across in about a minute and a half? Uh, maybe. I, so I get what, you, what you're getting at is you want to give them an opportunity to present the best answer. Yep. Um, but then at the same time, I don't mind the off-the-cuff stuff. I, exactly. I, I like the prepared answer. Some would say maybe like a stump, right? If you're campaigning, you may be doing like a stump speech. Right. And that's not necessarily right. what happens in local elections. Yep. But certainly, yeah, you want the candidates to be able to best represent themselves. But then also the ability to get that question that you might have to take a second uh, to think about, process, and then answer yeah. in a minute and a half. Yeah. Right? Yeah. In, in a minute mm -hmm. and a half. Uh, we originally was minute, and then we'd say, yeah. ah, we'll give them an extra 30 <laughs> seconds. Very you know, generous. Yeah, yeah. We, were, we were being generous. Um, but no, the, the idea behind it is that when they get that way, and you're absolutely right, the idea is that uh, 
it's not what you call gotcha questions, mm -hmm. uh, so, so to speak. Uh, it's more as in, uh, we're looking at uh, more in-depth questions that are going to be asked between the audience and uh, uh, we have some media that are looking to get us some, some uh, questions type sure. thing too. And the idea behind it though is it's not going to be a gotcha from like it's, it's, it's candidate A. Right. It's really toward that person sure. rather than candidate B then mm -hmm. suddenly trying to come in and answer a question mm -hmm. that's really at candidate A. Sure. So it's meant to be so that both can answer it, mm -hmm. but at the same time, oh yeah, we're planning on seeing some good uh, in-depth type questions. So tomorrow morning, Saturday the 11th at the library, um, it, I want to, and let's definitely keep that on the screen, Chad, that's fantastic. Um, is this event open to the public or no? Because good question. of social good question. distancing and we everything. We really, of course, went through all of that, yeah. uh, and early on, because in the planning stages, we decided that we are best not knowing exactly what the COVID-19 was going to do for us. Sure. And so what we decided was, okay, in the library, because the library itself has to have its own pr protocols with sure. all of that as well, yep. that we decided that what we would do is with uh, Media Tree, mm -hmm. um, uh, Chad Yoakum, is who he works with the library yep. even, um, he has very professionally set up a site for us where uh, the candidates are going to be spaced out kind of like on tables like this. Awesome. You know, and such. and. Um, the audience, no, because of not only the amount of room, but because of the, the, the problems with, you know, all of that sure, happening. Sure. And so that's why we made sure that we, we talked a lot about what did that mean about live streaming compared mm -hmm. to Zooming. Sure. And so that's, uh, I'm very excited on what the format is going to be. At. I think it's going to be great. So, Chad, can we go back to that uh, schedule? Because this isn't the only forum, certainly, but I want to do mention again tomorrow. Mm. And this is perfect because I was going to ask about who will be there, and there it is right there. Yeah. So uh, 10.30 a.m., county auditor candidates, uh, Brandy Harfst. Did I say her name right? Harfst? Did I say Harfst. that right? Harfst. Harfst. Yeah. Mary Mason Wheeler. Uh, Timmy Harfst. Vander Linden. Tybee. Tybee. See? <laughs> I would have struggled as a moderator. How about uh, that? And then at 1 o'clock, county sheriff candidates, Mike Shannon, Quinn Reese, and then the next event is coming up on August 1st. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Karen, but there are several of these uh, forums between the next... There's four total. There's four forums okay. total. So this weekend, then August 1st. Can we go back to that, Chad? Because I just wanted to peek and see who's going to be there on August 1st. Oh, they're all, that's great. That is perfect. All right, so August 1st, you can see the County Board of Supervisor candidates will be there. All right, and then if we go to August 22nd, which seems like a ways away, but you blink and it'll it's be not. here. It's not. And you've got your state Senate candidates, which is great, and then Saturday, September 12th, state representatives. So, let again... Me, let me make, point out yeah, a little go ahead. bit of something for you real fast, because as you'll see there where it says, like, Tom Cartney uh, and Tim Goodwin, sure. uh, District uh, 44, and then all of a sudden you get down to then on the, the other race where it says Sandy Dokendorf and David Kerr, you're mm -hmm. going, who are these people? What is that mm -hmm. district? Sure. The fun thing of it is, um, is that those people actually have just a portion of Muscatine County in it, like say. a couple towns. Yep. Like, for example, um, it is uh, the race with Bobby Kaufman. Mm -hmm. His area with Lonnie is actually... Uh, Wilton and I think a little bit of Duran area yep. if I remember That's correctly. Correct. Yep. Whereas the other guys are more down south yep. area by Louisa County and such. Well, and that's the thing, yeah. I, David <laughs> Kerr for sure, right? Yeah, a little <laughs> bit. So that it's important, and I, and I think the thing to take away from this: legal women voters um, not picking a side, nope. presenting this facilitating the forum, mm -hmm. adapting in a pandemic, working with Media Tree, who produces this show, to get it out so that it can yeah. be consumed so that the voter... And I, listen, I loved the... And you participated in the school board forums. Mm -hmm. I, I never thought I would watch as much as I did. I certainly interviewed all the school board candidates on this show, mm -hmm. but I still really appreciated that the League of Women Voters organized, put that together. I thought it went Thank extremely you. smoothly. So I, I'm excited that these forums are going to be able to continue to happen because, it, you know, again, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to say I'm going to probably vote in person, right? I voted in person uh, just a couple months ago, last month, maybe, if I can't remember the exact date. I, I'll probably go 
to the, the school board office, my polling place in November and vote. Um, people can vote by mail, of course, that's fine. Uh, but for me, I do like that feeling of going. But at the same time, I want to make sure I'm as educated as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to make sure that I have a chance to watch what these candidates have to say, regardless of where I end up voting. I want to have a well-rounded opinion. And that's what the league does such a great job. Well, that's part of it. And Mm -hmm. and when we're looking at what kind of dates that we want to use in the past, we've used more like uh, Mm -hmm. August, September and October, like right before November to flip. But then we decided that, you know, uh, with early voting, uh, right. that especially right now, and I could talk a little bit about with, with some of that stuff and statistics, but um, that, in fact, July 6th was the first day you could do the request for sure. a uh, early voting thing. But the actual early voting starts uh, in October, um, okay. October 5th. To be so exact. folks can request it still, mm-hmm. have it sent to the house. Yes. And then you got to wait until October 5th to start sending them in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The idea behind the request timing here is so mm-hmm. make sure everybody has a chance to be able to do it and get it in the mail, mm-hmm. you know, to them. So then they have time to look over it. Yeah. So that's why with the forums, then here you've got these people you're watching mm-hmm. up on screen about who they are and what they represent. Yep. So by the time it's time to really send that in, boom, you're ready. You have to feel good about this, Karen. I mean, it's a lot of work. And as I alluded to at the start of the show, you wear multiple hats. And I will ask yeah. you to put on one of those hats in a moment. <laughs> but it is no small order. Um, how many folks are involved with legal women voters with respect to whether it's a board or on the logistics side, the planning? Mm-hmm. I know Sue obviously was maybe going to be here this Absolutely, morning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sue Johansson. But it, it, how, how many others? And I don't expect you to, to name sure, names, sure. but what, for, what's the group look the, like? Sure. For the actual mm-hmm. um, for, uh, forums, uh, we have um, myself. Ali Glenn mm-hmm. and uh, Mary Wildermuth. Okay. And so the four of us, cl- including Sue, have been working very closely together in lots of Zoom meetings. In a couple times, I might have had a little bit of wine with me at the time, but um, <laughs> the, the the intent behind the meeting was was serious. Uh, but the the point is that we got a lot of accomplished um, yeah. doing it that way. Actually, yeah. you know, because sure. then if you have your screens with you, you're doing the we mm-hmm. literally sharing screens where you can see the letters we're trying to put together Excellent. a little bit of everything. Yeah. So it was quite uh, wonderful that way. As in how many uh, League of Women Voters, there is approximately just right under 50 in the county altogether. That's fantastic. And I'm mm-hmm. assuming the answer is yes. But for folks that are watching that are maybe interested in joining, mm-hmm. that what is that process like? Because I don't know. Um, if they're they, thinking, you know what, I want to get involved with League of Women Voters. I love what they're doing. Sure. What should they do? Sure. Um, yes, they can get a hold of me or they can get a hold of Sue Johansson, okay. um, for example. Um, then there is a... a, a a fee for the year okay. and that fee helps us along with some uh which also was some fundraising but right now that fundraising of course is a little harder sure um but that helps us to do our programs yep and so in fact we have other programs um that's going to be designed for the remainder of the year that has to do with some water quality and different things so awesome. there's a different focus of other folks that are on the league mm-hmm. that they work with those kind of things and you know it's like any other organization you mm-hmm. have certain people that do mm-hmm. certain type of things that they're that's their forte yeah. so if there is anybody out there that they love certain type of things that has to do with any of these type of issues get a hold of us and we'll be willing to have a great conversation and what a time to join at the 100th anniversary mark Mm -hmm. 1920 to 2020 2020 you know here we are um and and it's tomorrow the first candidate forum is tomorrow and i do think it's important and i hope that you if you're watching this right now you will either watch live tomorrow or catch a rebroadcast of the candidate forum i imagine the candidates are excited. It's oh, a yeah. great opportunity for them, yeah. again, regardless of party, to to be there, to represent themselves, um, and to talk to the people. Because yeah. that's ultimately what matters. And yes, during a pandemic, it's a little bit harder to talk to the people, whether it's your constitu- constituents or people you want to, you know, get in front of a lot of events haven't happened a lot of opportunities for campaign events are not going to be there well it's funny you should say that Mm -hmm. because being that we knew that we added on to something a little extra this year Mm -hmm. and that is uh we're doing a candid with candidates where we're going to have uh 
a separate time where we're okay. going to be meeting them in a relaxed atmosphere. In fact, I thought of like how you do here, which yeah. brought that to mind. Sure. And so what we're doing is going to a bunch of the local businesses and um, asking idea. them to say, hey, uh, can we you know, have in your business and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And then we have like a 10, 15 minute time frame with the candidate where we have that just a low key, really get to know the candidate. So after they've seen them in a forum, mm -hmm. then they're also going to be able to uh, have that, that there. That is a great idea. And it's a, and it's a great way for, for the candidates because, again, like you said, it's very difficult for them right now to get that exposure. Oh, we yeah. want to make sure it's a, an exposure that is uh, fair and honest for all of them. Yeah, and it's great. And I think that's so important. We want people to vote. If you're 18 and you, you, you don't vote, you can't complain, as I always say. you got to vote. I don't care who you vote for. you got to vote. I haven't missed any election. Since I've been, you know, I'm 36. I've been voting for 18 years. I wow. feel so old saying that. Yeah. Uh, and I haven't missed any opportunity to vote. And I take a lot of pride in being able to do it. And I will tell you, I thought that we did a great job locally uh, this last, uh, you know, time with yes, social yeah. distancing. And I thought everybody was was fantastic at my polling place. Uh, well, we had to give you an idea because I actually worked the polls. Yeah. And um, we had all together uh, in Muscatine County, 6,000 absentee voter. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's how many requested, you know, that. Um, um, and we had then uh, from there, to give you an idea, from mm -hmm. 216 to 218. Yeah. It was only like about 500. Wow. Yeah. So it's totally amazing how that has grown. And so sure. that's why it's very important as we think about, especially in the pandemic yeah. time, that yes, you want to be able to do in person, and there's and there was sure. a lot of people that there that day mm -hmm. that way, uh, but then there were those that really felt that yes, they could still get all their information. Yeah, to get their information yeah. and make that decision and make sure that gets in just great. So and however, think, it's going to work for them. I, that's uh, yeah, it's such a good point. If you're and I have the utmost respect. You know, I just saw a friend of mine outside who was picking up a Starbucks curbside that has really done a great job social distancing and it's not necessarily for her but it's out of care for her mom yeah who might be at risk yeah. so if you're doing it and you want to get the absentee request by all means if you can vote from your house and you're yeah. on your couch in the air Absolutely. do it because who knows what november's weather is with a look drink like. right with, with a you? drink it's national pina colada day <laughs> uh, every day can be national pina colada day if you try hard enough all right so the first legal women voters uh the the candidate forum tomorrow mm -hmm. It's happening at Muster Public Library. You can watch it live. You can watch it on MPW Cable with Media Tree providing coverage. It's going to be great. Um, definitely check that out. And there's all the info on the screen right there. 10.30 a.m. County Auditor candidates will be there. And then at 1 p.m. candidates for County Sheriff. Um, Anything we need to mention connected to League of Women Voters before I ask you to put on the school board cap? I think you did very well because there's okay. always a lot of stuff I can talk that way, but sure. I got a funny feeling you want the school board hat, so go for it. So I just, so obviously Karen Cooney was here when we were talking to all of the candidates for school board for Muscatine, and back then the thought was this school board will have the task of finding a suitable replacement for Superintendent Jerry Reby. Yeah and the curriculum audit and then the pandemic <laughs> gets thrown into there so karen uh, comes on this show like everybody else participates in the league of women voters candidate forum which is great uh and then is elected which is awesome and there's our school board right there on the screen some familiar faces right i didn't realize how tall aaron finn is holy moly when he was here, we were both seated. That guy is tall. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> and the, they put the short girl <laughs> right next to the say. tall guy. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and Always I saw good. Toby yesterday, and Mike, and Denny, and John. I see often, and Tammy, and yourself, and Aaron. It's a great group. Um, so you get to you get started, and mm -hmm. and we and I was fortunate enough to be on a a parent committee, and yes, I got sure. to interview. Yeah with the superintendent candidates and Clint Christopher, mm -hmm. Dr. Christopher, who's here now, was yes, my yes. top choice, which was just weird how that worked out. Um, so it was really nice to, to play a part in that. Pandemic starts, school doesn't go back, your yeah. life gets complicated. Yeah. So I guess I want to just get some reflections on how it's gone so far for you, and then I want to ask the question of wh what do we know about what school will look like in the fall? Mm -hmm. So give us some reflections and then 
however you can, and I know some decisions haven't been made yet, but right, right. as we look ahead a little bit. Um, well, first of all, I have to say that I have uh, uh, such a, a teacher's, what their, their job has mm -hmm. been to do over the years. The, the reason I know that is another hat I've had is I've been a substitute teacher. Right, right. <laughs> and um, I will tell you, uh, I had my surgery uh, in the fall, so I could not take and do a sub during that time. I was just about ready to start subbing again sure. when all this happened. And I had said, no, no, I don't think I will. Mm -hmm. And it had partially to deal with the fact that I am older and um, wanted to make sure what was all you know, going on with everything. And so when, when uh, the, we finally got the information enough from the governor that says, hey, no, we're gonna be closing down and everything, mm -hmm. it was a scramble. Sure. Because there's actually, if I didn't know if you know this, there's only like five um, school districts in the state of Iowa that actually already have some online hmm. type of education. So for them, yeah. For them, it was, I don't want to say a piece of cake, but it was for them, sure. it was definitely an easier transition. Mm -hmm. Whereas all the rest of the school districts are going, okay, how are we supposed to do this? Mm -hmm. And so with that kind of uh, uh, idea that they scrambled and they worked at it and did a great job trying to learn new technology mm -hmm. in a short period of time, mm -hmm. try to be able to teach the parents and the kids. And um, so it was ended up being what's called enriched. Sure. And so that's where the difference is. And when people start, um, wondering or complaining or whatever you want to call it about what it's supposed to be like this fall, the enrich was only meant to be, here's some good ideas and good lesson plans and mm -hmm. things like that, kids, for you to be able to work on, sure. but we're not going to grade you right. and we're not going to take attendance. Mm -hmm. So with all of that portion of stuff happening, and then right toward the end of the school year anyway, we lost a few of the kids, needless sure. to say. Sure. And because the state of Iowa said, oh yeah, yeah, you could do the one that we really want you to do, but it's some, somewhere like a two to three week course you would have to learn all this right, stuff. Right. And by that time, the school year would be over with anyway. Right. And they wanted to cram it in a short period of time and then do. And we decided that's not gonna happen. Let's sure. do the enriched. So that's where we came out of. And so yeah. now what we have to do. So, and that's where, um, and you alluded to this before we started, it seems like Monday, after mo this coming Monday, there will be a return to learn plan for Muscatine Community Schools? Is that? We, we hope to be able to. I don't to mean like a definitive, yeah, this is yeah. exactly what it's going to look like, but yeah, close yeah. to that? Is that? I can, I'm not, and just so you know that I can't speak for the whole board. Yeah, and I'm not looking for, for any yeah, scoop. Yeah. I'm just thinking Absolutely, you're getting together yeah. Monday and the plan yeah. Monday is to try yeah. and hammer out what it's right. going to look like. Is that yeah, fair? Yeah, because what, what the mm. governor did is ask us to do is what's called a return to learn plan, okay. which basically says show us a kind of like a checklist of the areas that you have three different type of, of basic scenarios. Mm -hmm. One is you go back all together, period. Right. Uh, second is what's called a hybrid, where you're going uh, part back and, and uh, part uh, with a uh, distant learning. Okay. Um, and then the other one is just basically distant learning. Okay. And so you take each one of those, and if you have not yet, if you watch what the school, uh, school board uh, uh, information um, mm -hmm. that was done, uh, I think it was on the 22nd, we had a meeting. It was like a three hour meeting. Yeah, there was a lot of good yeah, info. And yeah. it had a lot of great information because why they had to go through each one of those type of categories mm -hmm. and from, by the way, um, from the curriculum area of it, yep. special ed area of yep. it, and then the actual brick and mortar, what sure. happens while you're doing all of that. And so it, it's a lot of information to contain in your yeah. brain, you yeah. know, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And so what uh, the teachers and administrators have been doing since then is even expanding from there. And of course, mm -hmm. each of us are taking our own knowledge area. And as I said earlier, I'm mm -hmm. going to be going to a couple of Zoom meetings this morning right. that will help a little with that. The idea is then on Monday mm -hmm. evening, uh, we will be going back over that plan. Okay. Um, I cannot tell you uh, 100% what that means, mm -hmm. um, as in, uh, are we going to dedicate that saying, okay, this is what it's going to be, sure. or, you know, how much of it is going to be, you know, uh, available. Yeah. I, and again, you know, the, the task at hand when you get elected is replace the superintendent that's retiring, outgoing, and a curriculum audit, and that's a lot of work. Yeah. And then all of this happens. And I, you know, and, and even little things like having to adjust and adapt to how you have a school board meeting. 
yeah. and do we have the tech for that? Yeah. And then yes, of course, looking at our schools and what can we do to to keep our kids, you know, in that because routine is so important, yeah. um, and everybody's routine was disrupted. But yeah. I just hope for people that are watching, they can empathize with the the task that the school board has had. Um, it, it's been no small order. It, it is not a small order, mm -hmm. and, and I don't think I'm out of order to be able to tell you because it's uh, with public knowledge from that meeting. To, I can just give you an example because when mm -hmm. I've talked to somebody, they'll say something like, well, I think it needs to be just, because uh, I get a lot of questions and mm -hmm. stuff from folks, it needs to just go back to school. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, okay, but what about with this? And then, what do you mean, what about that? And I go, mm -hmm. well, you know, and so I start giving them examples, or like if it's a hybrid, for example, sure. we're talking uh, school buses. Right. You have to do some of that social distancing, right. yada, yada, you know, on all of that part mm -hmm. of the stuff. And so you're talking, we normally have about 25 routes, I believe it is, and you're talking it might have to push up to like 53 routes. Holy moly. And so, yeah, when they start doing that, you're going, and you're trying not to go like this when you're on a right. Zoom screen sure. or that. But uh, it gives you a really uh, reality, reality yeah. push, because there's a difference between what everybody knows they want, mm -hmm. because we want to have those kids to have the best education, Absolutely. period. Absolutely. Period, mm -hmm. and uh, I can I can about assure you uh, what we're working on on the distant learning area of mm -hmm. it is is good stuff, sure. and it's going to be uh, uh, I believe well received. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be some problems because of tech, whatever? Sure. But if you do the other route when you go to for the idea of school, what are all those things you have to do to sure. make sure the school mm -hmm. is you know ready to go? What yeah. you have to do? Oh, by the way, and. Who's going to take the temperatures of the kids right. and when they do it and how are you going to take and the kids where they're going to eat lunch or are they going to do there or the teachers going mm -hmm. to go from room to room mm -hmm. or the kids are going to go from room to room so it's it's a real process there's it's a real so reality much, process yeah. there's so many variables to this and the ultimate goal is to keep everybody safe yep. healthy and to get that education and i think uh, a big takeaway for me has been the commitment of our educators, the teachers did not want this to happen. They wanted, mm -hmm. they wanted to be able to in, be in the classroom. My favorite, one of my favorite stories to come from this, uh, because Phil Schleesman works here and his mm -hmm. wife Gina works part time here, who is a great yeah. teacher. Phil had said that on one of his days off, Gina was like, you got to get out of the house. I'm doing all these videos for the kids and you're distracting me. So the level of commitment from our educators has been outstanding, same for everybody. I mean, Lisa Bunn's watching live, I can see, and uh, from the administrative office to the school board members, but really everybody in our facilities. I, I give kudos that we are able to have graduation. Some yes. other districts recently just canceled. Yeah. You're not in the Quad Cities, yeah. couple couple districts yeah. said we can't do graduation, we just had it, went off without a hitch. Weather was okay, okay. for July uh, in Iowa, yeah. a little warm. Yeah. Uh, but I know that that was important to get done. So I, I, what I'm getting to is I feel confident with the board that we have in place, mm -hmm. with you know Dr. Christopher being in town, the new superintendent, and our educators, that together we will move forward. And whatever it looks like uh, will be the best for our kids. As someone that has you know two kids in the system and a third that will be there soon, yes. um, I feel confident in the people that are there. We, and what's interesting that you said uh, earlier on about the mm. curriculum audit, yeah. you know, which, by the way, that is about yay thick. Holy moly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the idea is it's going to take us a couple years to really go sure. through it. It's, it was meant. We asked for that audit on purpose because mm -hmm. we wanted to be able to do some better yeah. uh, structural changes and such. Mm -hmm. So that's why it was so, so fun to know that we also have a new administrator, yep. everything coming on board with that. And then actually, in a matter of speaking, even with the pandemic happening, this is almost like a perfect storm in a way. That's good sure. choice of words, right? Sure. Today, storm uh, <laughs> with it. And that is yeah. because the curriculum audit, some things that are in there, mm -hmm. we can incorporate that into what we're doing to these fixes yep. that we're looking at even now and for the future. So, Well, and I, yeah, I, I feel confident again about where we're going to head and will it be different? Sure. Do we ask for patience and grace from people like myself that have kids in the district? Yeah. yeah, I think you have to be understanding. None of us have navigated this before, Karen. Nobody's navigated the pandemic. I haven't. I wasn't here in 1918. I mean, if you were watching and you were, I, God bless you, that's great. But nobody else has gone through this. There hasn't been a graduating class that had their year ended, that didn't know if they would graduate, that didn't have a prom, that didn't have those little things that 
you know, uh, bring them closer together. So, but, but let me say one thing though, mm -hmm. and and I got, I really believe this. I really believe this from not only my my mm -hmm. um, my my little bit of teaching area that I've done, and sure, um, uh, my own daughter who actually had leukemia when she was six years old, sure. uh, and the resiliency of these kids are just so totally amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, they they're more than I think a lot of people give them credit for yep. of what they're able to do because. Katie had to wear a mask, you know, so many times. It became normal. It sure. was normal for us to be able to do all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and then with all of the other things that happen, you see how different uh, cancer patients and certain type of patient, uh, people in that, they know, they already understand that sure. what's important for them and what to do. Mm -hmm. And so I really believe that our kids are very mm -hmm. resilient and that they're going to be able oh, to yeah. come up with a way to make this work for them as well. Yep. I agree, and we definitely need to give them more credit because they are paying attention and watching and listening, just like we all are. Yeah. Uh, thank you for being here. For thank folks you. that are watching again, uh, Legal Women Voters Candidate Forum tomorrow. Please tune into that first of uh, four to come. Educate yourself, and then get ready to vote in November. Whether it is you know with a, a absentee ballot in the mail, get that requested, or if you're going to the polls, look at the countdown. One day, one hour, eighteen minutes. Um, I appreciate your time. Thank you for being here representing the League of Women Voters, but then also being able to speak with uh, the hat of being on the Muscatine Community School District School Board member. It's a big deal. Thank and you. Uh, I don't want to keep you from any of these Zoom meetings. You're yeah. very busy, <laughs> so I'll get you out of here. And I hope you have a great weekend. All right. Thank you, thank too, you, sir. Thank you, Karen. I appreciate that. All right. We're going to go. What do we got? We go outside or we go to breakfast? What do you think, Chad? We go to the truckload sale. Is Brad the man out there? Is Brad sweating this whole time yeah. at the truckload sale? There we go. Perfect. All right. Uh, live shot outside the store. Uh, Brad is in the shade. Good for him. Looks like he's maybe near the gas station hanging out watching uh, the setup for the truckload sale that continues in the parking lot here at Hy-Vee for, uh, you know, today till 7 p.m. and then back tomorrow from 9 a.m. until 7 p.m. And look at this. Brad is heading toward the truck. This is excellent. So we've got meat. We've got seafood. We've got snacks. We've got Pepsi at a great price out there. It's absolutely fantastic. All you have to do is park, enter the tent, place your order, and the team will take great care of you. So maybe you're thinking to yourself, can I get a box of burgers? Can I get a case of bacon? Can I get some catfish nuggets, some Pepsi? Or maybe you just want to take advantage of, uh, you know, the, the Barton Vodka or the Michelob Ultra deals or just the Gator, or the Powerade, excuse me, the Powerade deals are great. The team is inside the tent right there. Is that Caleb Drawbaugh? That is Caleb Drawbaugh. All right. Very good. So they're ready to go. Look at Brad getting right in the mix. He's just walking right in there. <laughs> It was like he was coming in hot right there for a minute. There's the Powerade deal. Uh, that was pretty awesome. I, again, I kind of feel like I'm playing a video game right now. All right. So uh, the refrigerated truck, we call that a reefer truck in the business. Refrigerated truck. That's a little insider, you know, inside pool right there. There's some uh, snacks and yeah, it's awesome. So I, I'm really happy to be able to have the ability to take you inside the truckload sale that's going on. I like that it's busy enough that they're like, get out of the way, Brad. We got to sell some stuff. This is great. This is awesome. It's great. Look at this. It's happening. There's Coors Light, $14.99 when you buy two of them heading out the door. Uh, case of bacon, 33 bucks. It's happening right now till 7 p.m. in our parking lot. The team is there. They're ready to go. Make them work. There's Steve Graham making them work, giving out marching orders. You know, got his sunglasses on. So... This store, uh, not super familiar with truckload sales. Certainly, uh, Hy-Vee Main Street downtown has done them for years, and they are also hosting a truckload sale. Uh, but we are having fun and having success, and um, the weather is going to cooperate for today and for tomorrow. So we want you to come out. We want you to take advantage of the deals. And uh, you can even see Hy-Vee Gas in the background. Got a new roof and a paint job. Looks awesome. All right. Um, thank you, Brad. I think you could probably come back if you want to. Get out of the heat and uh, come on back, Brad. And don't forget, when you spend $150 at the truckload sale, you get a 50-cent fuel saver. 
All right. That's an excellent deal. Okay, I want to mention uh, today, uh, the 10th of July, is National Pina Colada Day. Do you like pina coladas? Do you? When was the last time you had a pina colada? Do you like pina coladas? Did you get caught in the rain last night? Because that wouldn't be a good combination. Unless you were like at your house, on your deck, and you're having a pina colada. You're listening to that song, and you got caught in the rain. So we have some ideas right here on the set if you're going to celebrate National Pina Colada Day. And Chris was telling me that the Chi Chi's Pina Colada premix is very popular uh, because it's all right there for you. Now, if you're going old school, you're going to want to get like a mix and then some booze and then do it yourself, right? You can see there's a little, I think that's a master of mixes right there, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then there's uh, oh, Master Mixes is right here. And then you get a little bit of booze. I, I haven't had a ton of pina coladas in my life. I'm not going to lie to you. And it's not that I don't like them. It's just it's not something that's in my wheelhouse. But look at how good those look. Those look fun, right? Look at a little garnishment on there. Drink responsibly. Uh, and celebrate National Pina Colada Day. Weather certainly will be hot enough to enjoy one, Right. I don't know if you have like a threshold where you're like, if it hits 90 degrees, I'm having a pina colada. They were just saying on the news that we've had like the most 90 degree days in July in history, I think. So that's that's a thing. Uh, Today is also National Kitten Day. I don't love cats. I'm allergic. Here is a cat card. This is about as close as I want to get. Is this supposed to meow? Is there a thing I'm not pressing? Where is it at? Oh, right where it says press here, Chris. Is that what you mean? <laughs> oh, Tony. Oh, yeah. I don't like cats. This isn't for me. Do not want. They look ferocious. Don't like it. Don't want it. Cats. They look. Look at this one. This one looks possessed. Come in on this guy right here. Right here. Tell me that guy's not going to bite you. Look, come on in closer. Come on in. No, no, no. Get closer, Chris. Right here. Come on. You got a 4K camera. Get all up in that. Look at that eye. Look at that eye. Look at that thing. Dude, that thing is going to jump on you when you're sleeping. That's the thing I don't get with the cats. You don't know where they are. You, the next thing you know, they're on your shoulder, and you're like, oh, hi. They're like, Row. and then you try to pet them, and they're like, <sighs> and then they have hairballs, and they go to the bathroom in a box in your house. I'm out. No cats for me. Be gone, kitten. But please, if you love the cats, adopt from the Humane Society. They probably have a thousand cats, I bet. They got too many cats. Uh, Today is also National Car Collector Day. And I love the fact that this still exists. This reminds me of something that my dad would get at the store. Hey, I got to go get a classic car roundup. They got it? And then you flip it open, and it's like people trying to sell their classic car. What do you got? What do you got? Give me, just pick one. Go in on one. What do you see? What do we got? We got a little action right there. We got a uh, 1957 Chevy Nomad and a 79 Corvette. $14,000. Goodness. Did that one say $98,000 for a 57 Chevy Nomad? What do you do? You don't drive them. That's what I don't get about collector cars. You buy them. You spend all this money. you, you, You... and then you just put it in the garage and you take it to car shows? That's not me. If I get a DeLorean, and I don't know if there's a DeLorean in here, but if I get a DeLorean, I'm driving it. Maybe not driving it every day. Maybe I don't even fit. Maybe I need to be more realistic. But I do fit in a Mini Cooper. We have one of those at the store. Um, yeah, I just can't believe the prices on these. $78,000. Look at that right here. Mercury. Look at that. These cars are cool, though, right? Mercury Street. And Mundelein, Illinois, over by there. And there's like phone, there's people's phone numbers. <laughs> Hello? I should call. I can't prank call people. It's illegal. But I would totally call and be like, you got that uh, Mercury? So this is cool that these, mag- that these still exist. I didn't know that this was still a thing where you could pick one up. And, uh, and then you've got a classic car magazine right here, right? You've got your Corvette magazine. I'm assuming it's all about Corvettes, right? And then Hot Rod. Hot Rod. Yeah. Mopar Survivors. If you guys give me a second, I can find a picture of my dad's convertible 
that I don't know what he's trying to do with it. I'm like, you're not trying to sell that, are you? Because I feel like my dad doesn't know how to post things into like a Facebook marketplace. So he just keeps posting pictures and typing marketplace. And I'm like, what are you doing with that convertible, bro? I don't know. I'm like, let's not sell that, right? I'll take it. Um, so here's my dad's, let's see. Oops. All right. That should go in a second. And again, I, I know it's a cutlass. Don't expect me to know any more details than that because I don't. But I know that it's a cutlass and it's a cool car. And that's what he's got over there. And it's just sitting in his garage. Why can't I have that out here? I would drive that. Like I said, I don't know if I drive it every day. But it's not getting any use in my dad's house. I can tell you that much. It's sitting in a garage. Wouldn't that look cool driving that thing? Those old cars are just like boats. They're so long, right? Jeez Louise, you turn and you finish turning a day later. Those are so big. So happy uh, National uh, Collector Car Day. Hy-Vee Store Director Matt Schweitzer, who's off, is a car collector. He's got like a old Chevy truck, and I don't know what year or what kind, but he's restored it. All right. So whether it's a collector car or a brand new car, Toyota of Muscatine would love to have your business. And this is the Toyota of Muscatine What's in the Box. And if I had to fathom a guess, today I'm going to say it's a spider. Is it rainwater from the storm yesterday? Eyes closed, doors open, full heart, and, oh man, this is a package. Does it have any connection to do with the National Days? This has got to be something, okay. Because I felt like it was a streamer, so now I'm inclined to say that it's something that you could use to dress up your pina colada. Oh no, it's for the cat. It's catnip. Ew, gross. What does catnip even do to these cats? Toyota Muscatine, what's in the box? Okay, I don't, so behind, I don't understand what catnip is. It makes them go wild, right? I don't know. I don't have a cat, but this is the stuff. Meow, you got any of that catnip? Look at the ingredients, 100% catnip. Okay, but what is it? And look at this cat on the front. Has this cat had too much catnip? Meow, I don't know what's happening. Meow, I can't stop pawing at the ground. Look at this guy. He's like, I'm freaking out, man. So there's catnip. Okay. Perfect. Catnip. Oh, it's a plant. All right. Well, that makes sense. All right. Are they supposed to have it in moderation? I have a lot of questions about catnip. It has a scientific name. Napita cataria? I don't know. Okay. Well. There you go. There's catnip. Apparently, we have it here at the store if you need it. Who knew? I didn't know that. Lesson learned. Uh, speaking of things that we have in the store that are 25% off, we've still got some of these cool iron signs here. So maybe this is one that you buy. And uh, you can see, watch this. Are you going to clean the garage? Or oh, you're going to drink a beer. I have a feeling that this always does the drink of beer, right? Let's see. Let me grab it here. Is it going to do yard work? Is it going to work on the honey-do list? Let's start it at the top. I bet it's going to go to drink a beer in moderation. 25% off. This could be yours in the garage, wherever you're going to put it in the basement. Um, that's pretty cool. So somebody made that, which is awesome. We like when people make things, that's for sure. Okay, uh, and then we just got some fun floral finds. Like, this is cool. I don't know what this is, but this is nice. It's a, um, what is it? It's from Creative Co-op, and probably just a little bit of water. Look at that. Put that on the desk. Take that home. Low maintenance, right? If you're the kind of person that doesn't know if you have what it takes to... Uh, to t I don't want to show the rest of the cat toy. I feel like there's cat toys over here. I've already, I've already got a hot take on cats. I will remind you again about the weather radios because we did have a weather. Uh, we had some severe storms yesterday in the area. I was talking to my dad on FaceTime after the storms hit, and uh, he was like, we're supposed to get rain. And I'm like, well, if your weather follows our weather, yeah, you will. So weather radios right here, you program them. And again, the benefit of a weather radio is they're always plugged in and ready. And then uh, should a storm be approaching and there's a alert that goes out, you've got it right here. They just start talking, little, little robot action. 
So that's cool. Uh, our friend Miranda is watching. Hello, Miranda. Um, that makes me want to remind everybody, uh, we have kind of adjusted the location for Drive Up Donuts. Chad, I'll airdrop you a picture of where Drive Up Donuts are going to happen now. It's in our parking lot, and it is at the Isles Online check-in. So if you have enjoyed Drive Up Donuts for the last couple months, we have moved Drive Up Donuts to, as someone described on Facebook, it's like Santa's... <laughs> It's like Santa's house. Yeah. So in our parking lot, that's where folks pull into the lot to check in for aisles online. And that is where you will be able to get drive up donuts from 6 to 9 a.m. So it's a little earlier and it's cash only out there. So five bucks for a half dozen, 10 bucks for a full dozen, which is still cheaper than in the store. And we had the first drive up donuts available out there today. All right, so check that out. They'll be back out there tomorrow, 6 to 9, Friday, Saturday, Drive Up Donuts, continuing at the store. Um, I want to mention the DSW shoes and sandals at 75% off. Whatever we have left, it's going quick. It's near the dairy. It's DSW. It's your size. It's a great price. I would not hesitate. Listen, if there was something in my size back there that was comfortable, I would have bought it by now. But certainly, you should take advantage of 75% off. So you pick up a pair of sandals or a pair of shoes, and the price on the box says $39.99. That's not what you're paying. You're taking 75% off of that. All right? You're taking 75% off of the price on the box. That's how that works, okay? I have like a burp hiccup combo again. That's awesome. Thanks a lot, Starbucks drink. All right, uh, let's show you the truckload sale ad if we can. Did Brad get the message that he can come in? I don't want him to be out there like... He, he's coming in the door right now. There we go. There's Brad right there. Perfect. All right, I don't want him to come in and be like, I've been outside all morning. I'm crispy. You know, get in here, Brad. Get out of the heat. Uh, we'll show you. The, I don't know if he's going to come in and be like, you guys left me out there the whole show. You did great, Brad. You're marvelous. Get in here. Get out of the heat. Uh, the truckload sale ad, I'll show you this. We have everything in stock still. Will that be the case by 7 p.m. tonight? I don't know. You know, some things will probably sell out. Um, I wouldn't hesitate. It's 927 right now. I'd get here. I'd do it, right? I wouldn't wait till tomorrow. I would get in here. So we've got meat bundles. We've got cheese, Gary's Quick States, uh, chicken breasts. We've got uh, bacon, beef patties, chicken grillers, pork patties, twice-baked potatoes, some appetizers, breaded catfish nuggets, imitation crab, Bristol Bay frozen sockeye salmon, some wine and spirits deals. Oh boy, here we go. Wine and spirits deals. Uh, we've got snacks out there as well. It's all in the truck, in the parking lot, at the store. That's where you're going to want to get this, and you can only get these deals there. Uh, we're going to get a mic on Chef Scott. And we'll talk to him in a second. And don't forget, y'all, if you spend $150, you get a 50-cent fuel saver in the parking lot. Miranda said she's getting donuts tomorrow. Miranda, I haven't had sugar all week. All week I made it without it. All right, Chef Scott's here. So I was Monday. Was it Monday or Tuesday that was Macaroni Day? It was Macaroni it was, it was Day. It was Tuesday. So Tuesday was National Macaroni Day. So we had all these different kinds of macaroni and cheese. And I've got this guy, Chris Anderson, over here that's saying mustard and macaroni and cheese. And you're here to say what? There's mustard in that macaroni. There's cheese. mustard in this. By the way, have you ever seen a cuter thing of macaroni and cheese? This is like a mini craft. Is that what you would say? Yeah. yeah. So w is there bacon in it, too? There's bacon on top, a little bacon garnish, because, I mean, bacon makes everything pretty good. Wow. And it's a little baby sample fork. Um, what else is in this macaroni and cheese as I take a bite for the team? So there's garlic in there. We have okay. chives, uh, just a little fresh black pepper, some Swiss cheese, okay. monster, cheddar. Holy moly. Some stone ground mustards in there. <laughs> that is outstanding. Wow. So this is the Chef Scott mac and cheese that people are going to be able to come into the store and buy yep i'm going to package it up today it's going to be in the cold case across from italian so you'll be able to buy that in the truckloads if you want <laughs> this is awesome look at this chris can you come in on this just to see how good this looks so again you could come into the store pick some of this up 
and take it home and all you got to do is heat it and eat it. And this is like the most amount of delicious carbs I've had all week and isn't it worth it? Look at that mac and cheese. What is the secret besides mustard yeah. to making a homemade mac and cheese? Because I feel like it's one of those things that people are too intimidated to try. It's, I'm taking it's one of those bite. things where I use natural cheese. I mean, you can use you know the processed cheese. It can, it'll give it a smooth texture for sure if you yeah. use the processed cheese. But if you use natural cheese, you can uh, pick and choose your flavor, build your flavors. Oh my god! And gosh. you do it low and slow. So low if, and slow. If you heat the cheese up too fast, it's going to separate and it's going to get grainy. But if you heat it slow, it's going to still have that smooth texture. Oh, my gosh. It's and, uh, so good. So, I mean, and I'm not just saying that because Chef Scott's here and I tried it. That's outstanding. So, yeah. Wow. And look at that. Is Brad's cam right there. We got, look at this. Got a little bit of lighting. But look, I mean, this is just unbelievable. So what um, Miranda says, how did I miss macaroni day? Well, Miranda, listen, you didn't miss anything because... A uh, chef prepared mac and cheese is going to be available to purchase later today, is what you're telling yeah, me, right? Yeah, very shortly, very shortly. I got to let it cool a little bit, so yeah. But it's it's pretty much ready to go. If she wants to come in right now, I'll package it up more for her. So. Look at that. All right, now what? Now the mustard thing. Now I don't taste mustard. No. Right, I taste a lot of things when I took a bite. But you're you're saying the ground mustard helps. So, I mean, think of it like this. So you get mm -hmm. like a charcuterie tray. Okay. Tray. You get cheese there with okay. meat. And there's always mustard or a pickle on the side okay. that, you know, pairs well with it. it sure. So, like, the acid cuts the fat. So, like, okay. sweet and salty, you know, f fatty and acidic. Mm -hmm. Like, they complement each other very well. And it's just wild, man. I mean, it's, it's un first of all, it's probably the best mac and cheese I've ever had in my life. Um, and I guess I just didn't know that it was one of those things um, that was a part of mac and cheese. The mustard, at least. Yeah. Miranda says, please tell me that that mac and cheese is going to be available for aisles online so here's what i'll tell you miranda if you guys want some of the chef scott mac and cheese and you put it in an order i would leave it in the comments because it probably won't be online just because it's yeah. getting made today um, but you could put it in the comments you could uh call the store and tell them hey this is miranda and i want some of that chef scott mac and cheese on my order and then we'll take it from there uh it's so good all right so uh since you're here Yesterday, you did, and I'm going to airdrop Chad a quick pick. You did a French dip egg roll that was outrageous. Um, I could not believe, I mean, I, I don't want to say I couldn't believe how good it was because you're a professional chef, but when you talk about a French dip sandwich and then putting it into an egg roll form, oh my gosh, it was unbelievable. And people obviously enjoyed it because you're like sold out of the ones that were. Yeah, I put, right? them, yeah, I put them in the commissary there. Look at that though. It, that was probably the biggest egg roll I've ever made in my life. It was, it, was, it was about the size of a burrito, so that's a full plate. So, I just, I, I hope y'all understand. Like, Chef Scott says to me on uh, Tuesday, he's like, "I think I'm gonna do a French dip egg roll," and I'm like, "Okay." And then there it is, and I had it for lunch, and it was awesome. It was awesome. Uh, tonight's dinner, Friday, so. Prime rib. Prime rib is one of those things that I've never prepared myself. Um, you have a 14 ounce cut and a 10 ounce cut ready to roll tonight. What time does that start officially? Uh, I can start it as soon at four to seven is when okay. is the main is the main hour. So. Perfect. So starting at four p.m. tonight, four till seven. If you want to not cook, the menu is on the screen. You're gonna get your choice: king cut, queen cut, prime rib, ready to go. Right, 14 ounce yep. or 10 ounce. The horseradish white cheddar mashed potatoes and asparagus. Yes. Horseradish white cheddar mashed potatoes. Horse, so many good compliments gonna, gonna right say, there. Horseradish goes well with prime ribs, so, you know. Well. Yeah. It's an awesome idea. And then seafood Saturday tomorrow, doing some seasonings on those giant uh, Argentinian grilling shrimp. Just the size of my hand. Like, they're, I, I, they're bigger than last year, I swear. They're so great. I swear. Um, this mac and cheese will be, what, how, what size is it going to be packaged up in? I will Did pack say in that? two sizes. I'll do. Okay, like, I'm taking like, another like bite. Little, Don't judge me. I'll do like the one pounder, like mm -hmm. the, a pint, and probably a quart. So, I made, I made a stock pot about two feet so tall, good. full. So we're, I got, I have. So I have you some, have that much mac and cheese I have that made. Much mac and cheese this made. tall is what you just yeah. said. I have a big old stock pot ready to go. So, I can't. I, there's so many things going on in that mac and cheese. It's so good. It is so good. 
Like I wasn't gonna eat more than like a bite, but now I'm thinking like I might just polish the whole thing because it little, is outrageous. It's a little sample. It's just a little sample. It's just not gonna hurt. You know how much I'm, how many steps I'm gonna take today, yeah. going back and forth from that truck. Yeah, it's it's warm outside. I will burn the calories. Yeah. Look at that though. Come on, man. This stuff is amazing. If, and don't feel bad. Like if you're making your own homemade mac and cheese, that's cool. Or I'm sure if people wanted a recipe, you could give them one for yeah. this, right? Yeah, absolutely. Look at that. Oh, my Lanta. That's happening right now. That's happening. All right, one more bite. Mm-hmm. That's killer, man. That was so good. Um, all right. Uh, since you're here, a teaser for next week. Teaser. You had an idea. Corn dog? The Maybe. Fa the fairs have been canceled, so I want yeah. to bring the fair to High V. So I was thinking, uh, you know, corn dogs. I love so. the idea. Just so homemade, for pe so. Pe people that are watching, the plan for Chef Scott every week is like a healthy lunch on Wednesday, some fun stuff Thursday, dinner Friday, and then seafood Saturday. Yep. So if you're watching, just know, keep an eye out for the weekly menu. But today you got to come in. You got to get some of this mac and cheese. You got to get the prime rib. It's awesome. All right. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. That's so good. That's just like comfort food 101. Right on, right on. I appreciate it, sir. You can leave this here. We'll find a good yeah. home for it, I think. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to mention a couple of things, and we're going to get out of here because we are not, not that we're ever running late, but we've covered a lot of ground today. This is, this is silly how good that is. Chris Anderson saying he would still just put mustard on top of it. That's not what you're meaning, right? Because that's so good, that doesn't need anything. You know what that needs? That just needs to be eaten. That's how good that is. I love the little, look at the little baby fork, by the way. Is there any, look at that little baby fork. So that's killer, man. That's Chef Scott. He's got it going on, and uh, I really hope you'll come by the store. And, uh, and also keep in mind, you know, Chef Scott could totally, if you called him and you were like, hey, um, could you whip together like a dinner? Like if you're having a small get-together, catering, whatever, I mean, he would do it for you. The answer is always yes here at the store, that's for sure. All right, uh, a little bit of rapid fire, and we'll get out of here. Um, the fuel saver, listen, $20,000 basically. We're almost there for the month of June. $19,000. Uh, we saved you a bunch of money, and I just hope you come in. And you get the fuel saver. If you don't have it, it's okay. But don't leave money on the table. If you shop at Hy-Vee, save at the pump. You owe it to yourself. And we hope that you'll do it. It is still hot this weekend, hot into next week. Isles Online can do your shopping. You can order groceries from the comforts of home. We have same-day groceries available. So if you're asking yourself, are there openings for today? Yes. Tomorrow, absolutely. Let our team take care of you. You can order your groceries for delivery. You can order them for pickup. You don't have to get out of your car. You pull in. They send you a text when to pull up to the building. We load your stuff and you go. I have an order to take home later. So we use it at my house, and I hope that you'll check it out. Download the Isles Online app or go to hy slash grocery for that. I mentioned the DSW. We don't have to do that. Um, we can show you some food court specials for July and then uh, we'll remind you about the store hours then we'll get out of here I think I'm just looking I think I've covered everything that was on my list so uh, deals for lunch now listen that could be lunch right there the thing of mac and cheese made by a chef that could be all the lunch you need but if you're looking for other options maybe it's not today maybe it's the weekend here you go today's Friday man this week went by fast didn't it so I, like when I just said today's Friday, I felt like, is it really Friday? Because it doesn't feel like Friday. Not that I don't want it to be Friday. It's just I have a very busy weekend. Uh, dinner for six tonight, BOGO in the Market Grill Express. Buy one, get one free off the menu. That's super cool. Rack of ribs, Boney is actually ad busting that price. He's going to eleven ninety nine. So that's saving you a buck. Fish dinner available. And then for Saturday and Sunday, you can see the specials on the screen. Breakfast included in those specials. And uh, why don't we go CBI Bank and Trust Isle Cam. We can show you a high five breakfast. Or what is it today? It's, yeah, high five, right? So here's a breakfast special. Look at that. Bacon, eggs, hash browns, pancakes, breakfast to serve. A little coffee in the background. Banana, a little butter. You got to have butter on. You know how much I like pancakes see i don't feel bad because there's people at home that are going to be like now i heard you say at the start of the show that you lost 12 pounds since monday and that is true but for me i am addicted to sugar 
So like having a little mac and cheese, I could do that all day because it doesn't do it for me. If I had like a pancake with real syrup, I, my brain would go, give me all the sugar. And I can't do that. And by cutting sugar, I can lose weight. This I'm okay with. This is just, this is fine. And if you're thinking, well, Tony, those carbs could just turn into sugar. I get it. But it doesn't signal my brain like syrup would. You know what I mean? Like if I had a, I don't even know the analogy. If there's like a piece of cake here and I took a bite, that would do something different than this savory mac and cheese. Right? Plus, Chef Scott was smart and he brought the baby fork so I don't have to feel bad if I just come back in. Look at it, it's one noodle. One noodle. One noodle. All right. Stores open at 6 a.m. We're ready to take care of you. 6 to 11, Monday through Sunday. Come and see us. Drive up donuts tomorrow. Six to nine in the parking lot at the Isles Online check-in location. Truckload sale today, Friday till 7 p.m. Last day tomorrow, Saturday, 9 a.m. till 7 p.m. I don't think I have anything left to say except thank you for watching. Thanks to all of our guests this week. We've definitely had a lot of fun and a good variety of guests that have joined us. Um, I will comment on uh, the passing of Gary Schrock. His services are today. Across the street at Calvary Church, Gary Schrock was an awesome guy who passed away tragically uh, last weekend. I served with Gary on the Salvation Army Advisory Board. Very nice guy, super outgoing, loved his community, loved his family. Um, I know his son Davis, who used to work part-time at the radio station, and uh, I, I'm thinking about the, uh, the Schrock family and... Um, yeah, it's been, you know, we lost, we lost quite a few Muscatines. Jerry Jones passed away last weekend as well. Longtime realtor, super nice guy. Maybe he went to one of Jerry's tag sales that he was famous for. Uh, so we're thinking about those families for sure. All right, we'll be back next week. Will it be hot? Yes, it seems like I saw a day in the forecast next week where it was like 96. So what do you want me to tell you? This is Iowa. It's July. We just had severe weather pop through. We never know what's going to happen, really. It's kind of like a roll of the dice, if you'll have it. So be safe. Take care. And uh, thanks to CBI Bank and Trust, Toyota of Muscatine. What's in the box today? It was catnip. Still don't really understand catnip because I don't have a cat because I'm allergic. Uh, but maybe you have a cat and you know what it does. Leave a comment. Send me an email. And thanks to our friends at Lutheran Living Senior Campus. We will see you soon. Have a good weekend. Be safe. Goodbye. Did you see that? Watching High V today with Tony Tone. Be very, very quiet. We're hunting wabbits. We'll do it again tomorrow with more local guests from in and around the Muscatine community. I'm trying to emote for the play that the right. alumni are putting on in Wilton yeah, on this Friday, Saturday. Questions, comments, know a great guest? Reach out to High V today with Tony Tone on Facebook or via email. High V today at gmail.com. Thank you.